Hello and welcome to another edition of As the Blade Turns. I am Dave Lees, and this is our update on the Camila Valieva doping scandal. For those of you who are new here, please subscribe below and be sure to smash that like button as we all need love during the Olympics and extra support to get us through. Well, I've been getting so many texts, emails, Instagram DMs, comments. Where's the information? What's the update? Uh, so this video is going to address uh, the current situation, uh, and at the end I will discuss some of my thoughts about the possibilities of what could happen based on what has happened in previous figure skating uh, situations uh, and other uh, doping scandals. Uh, I'm going to start by reading uh, the latest article. Uh, this was in the Chicago Tribune. Russia's Kamila Volyeva, the 15-year-old gold medal favorite in women's figure skating, reportedly test positive for a banned substance. Uh, Beijing, uh, Kamila Volyeva, the 15-year-old Russian superstar who was expected to deliver her nation its third straight gold medal in women's figure skating, practiced as usual on Thursday after hours after reports surfaced that she had tested positive for a banned substance. Volyeva tested positive for the heart medication before the Beijing Games, the Russian newspaper RBC reported. The sample was reportedly obtained before Volyeva won the European Championships last month in Estonia, a performance that solidified her status as the leader of Russia's quad squad of elite women's figure skaters. It's unclear if Russia is appealing or fighting the result, though her lighthearted appearance at her regularly scheduled practice implies that the Federation isn't accepting any finding that would eliminate her. She is not suspended. Russian figure skating Federation spokeswoman Olga Ermolina said, offering no further detail. The International Skating Union, the sports governing body, said in a statement, it cannot disclose any information about any possible anti-doping rule violation. Convenient. Valieva ran through her program and skated with teammate Alexandra Trusova while getting pointers from coach Eteri Tuberiza at the practice rink. Valieva fast a smile to one of her coaches near the end of the roughly 30-minute session, and none of the skaters took questions from reporters. When Valieva left the media area, she gave a gesture with a fist in the air. It appeared that she responded to something inaudible that was asked by a journalist speaking to her in Russian. A positive test could not only cost Russia the gold medal from the team competition, but threaten Valieva's chance to win the individual competition. It starts Tuesday, and she is the overwhelming favorite to win gold. The drug detected, trimetazidine, is a metabolic agent that helps prevent angina attacks and treats vertigo, according to the European Union Medicines Agency. It is banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency because it can help endurance and increase blood flow efficiency, both of which could help a figure skater. The most famous case of trimetazidine and sports doping involved Chinese star swimmer Sun Yang, the three-time Olympic champion who served a three-month ban in 2014. Russian bobsledder Nadezhda Sergeyeva also tested positive for it at the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics. She was disqualified from the two-woman bobsled event and served an eight-month ban. It is unclear whether Volyeva applied for a therapeutic use exemption or has a history of heart problems. Russian athletes are in Beijing competing as ROC, short for Russian Olympic Committee, after the country was banned because of its massive state-sponsored doping scheme at the 2014 Sochi Olympics. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov, husband of Russian Olympic ice dance champion Tatiana Navka, referred reporters to the International Olympic Committee. As always, not knowing the essence, everyone begins to yell left and right. We will not join this orderly line of screamers, he said. Now, this is interesting because the Kremlin is punting to the IOC, knowing that the IOC cannot actually discuss this matter because the athlete in question is a minor. The IOC and Switzerland-based International Testing Agency, which oversees the Olympic drug testing program, have declined to comment on the case. On Thursday, IOC spokesman Mark Adams said it would not be appropriate to talk of an ongoing legal case or all sorts of speculation that I have also seen overnight. Mark Adams appeared very nervous <laughs> during that concert, <laughs> during that conference yesterday, uh, perhaps a bit ill-equipped uh, for this situation. The case is more complicated because minors have protection within the World Anti-Doping Code from being identified. Now, this is interesting because Russia and the IOC are certainly exploiting this, even though the stars of figure skating, especially the women's event, the marquee event of the Olympic Games, are all minors. Obviously, everyone has been worried, waiting for a decision, said Marisi Kavidishvili of Georgia, who trains with Valieva in Moscow and has been in contact with her. Her condition is good, and it seems like everything is fine. 
So this is really interesting because we're going to talk about the information bubbles and you can see if you even look at uh, some of the comments on our YouTube channel what the propaganda uh, in the Russian media is saying because then all of the commenters will then write those comments here, which has been no official information, there's no official report because the IOC hasn't said it because they can't say it because she's a minor, remember. And then <laughs> they are talking about how uh, it's, it's very slick. It's very slick. You have to admit the, the Russians are very talented at this, uh, at this information warfare. So they can't actually say that it's her, even though their own newspaper reported that it is her. But Morris Kavitishvili of Georgia confirmed to us that it is Valieva and that she is doing well, even though obviously we live in the real world and can know that Camila Valieva is the athlete who tested positive and that's why all of the cameras are on her all the time. Uh, Morris is actually Georgian, uh, so he is able to speak to the press, even though he trains with her and the Russian athletes have been advised uh, not uh, to speak to journalists. So it's very, <laughs> it's semantics, games, incredible. Uh, the uncertainty in Valieva's case contrasts with swift action taken by the ITA against an Iranian skier at the Beijing Games. Hossein Saveh uh, Shemshaki, I, I apologize for my pronunciation of the name, I've never seen it before, uh, gave a sample Monday that tested positive for anabolic steroid uh, and was provisionally suspended last Wednesday. The International Skating Union can also take out athletes with interim bans if they test positive at its events or in samples it gets before January 27th, when the ITA took over the Olympic anti-doping program. The ISU also has not commented. The first indication of a problem with the results of the three-day team competition, which concluded Monday with Russia winning gold, the US silver, and Japan bronze, came when the medal ceremony was postponed indefinitely. If the Russian team is disqualified, the US team would be elevated to the gold medal for the first time in the event. Japan would be awarded silver, and fourth place finisher Canada would receive the bronze. If any athlete and team is disqualified or had results nullified, an appeal is likely, which could further delay the medals presentation. The Court of Arbitration for Sport has set up an office in Beijing to hear urgent cases. I think there's a lot of other factors that are being put in play, said American skater Nathan Chen, who won the individual title on Thursday and can now end up with another gold medal. Whatever ends up being the case will be the case, and I'm still wrapped up in what I was able to do today. Looking forward to hearing what is ultimately decided. Shoma Uno of Japan, who was in third individual event and now stands to get a team silver, said he wasn't certain of all the facts surrounding Valieva's case, but seemed to indicate the very notion of doping troubled him. Everybody is giving our best in practice to perform for an event like this, Uno said. When I think good or bad, it's not a big deal, but doping is something to which all athletes pay extra attention. Now, this is interesting, and this is why it's really maddening um, as someone who covers the sport to realize that most of the reporters who are in this case uh, and at the event and at these press conferences don't have all of the background information because they don't specialize in covering a sport in figure skating now that media funding has been cut uh, so much, uh, especially when reporters are calling me to ask questions about figure skating. They don't know what a wrap is, a jump. And while I definitely respect uh, that they're giving the sport coverage, you wonder, why doesn't that reporter know this? Why don't they have this information? Because what they should know is that Shoma Uno trained with Terry Tuberiza for a period of time, and he would certainly have insight to some of the training practices that are in question here, including the administration of drugs. The longer the uncertainty drags on, the more skaters will finish their competitions and leave the tightly controlled Olympic bubble for home. Everyone is doing absolutely everything that the situation can be resolved as soon as possible, Adams said, though he cautioned, as you know, legal issues can sometimes drag on. Traditional doping is uncommon in figure skating because additional muscle mass is generally a negative. Uh, but many skaters have been caught over the years trying to control their weight with diuretics, which are banned for their ability to mask steroid use and other medications that could give them the slightest edge. Russian skaters in particular have a history of positive results dating to 2000 when decorated pair skater Yelena Bereshnaya was stripped of a gold medal from the European Championships for testing positive for pseudoephedrine. Months later, Andrea Radikon actually tested positive for pseudoephedrine as well. Um, they also didn't mention here, but Marina Klimova tested positive in 1991. In July 2020, Maria Sotskova was dealt a 10-year ban just months after announcing her retirement for allegedly forging a medical certificate to explain a doping violation. Sotskova finished 8th at the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang. Now, 
it's really interesting to read Sports Rue and to see the Russian gaslighting that is going on. We don't know. There is no inf official information. We have to wait for official information. We can't talk about this. Then the commenters, how dare you talk about this? There's no in official information. Meanwhile, every article on Sports Rue has a photo of Camilla, and they are discussing the drugs she allegedly took at length. It is interesting to read the comments as we all live in our information bubbles. But in the U.S., the Democrats and Republicans are aware of what the other side is saying. In this case, Russia's information bubble is like an alternative universe. And the gaslighting is really immense and somewhat impressive, although rather depressing to read. Now, the Russian athletes are not um, supposed to talk to the press and the Russian press are not supposed to uh, cover specifics. Honored coach of the USSR, Tanya Tarasova, answered questions about the possible doping of Russian figure skater Kamila Volyeva, and she said, and I told you that I don't believe in all this. We will watch and wait for Kamila to perform in the individual competition. Let's hope everything goes well. For this, everything was done to unsettle Volyeva, said Tarasova. Now, this is interesting because the Russians are saying she's going to compete in the individual event. They are applying pressure. They are applying their own pressure. If you, if you noticed, yesterday was a complete stunt. They had Kamila go to the practice even though they don't know if she'll be able to compete in individual competition it was then signaling oh this is going to be fine this is all nothing and they are putting the image out to the world this is all just a 15 year old girl and a lot of nonsense they are also focusing on the fact that it wasn't a positive test at the olympics but that doesn't matter because at the end of the day training is extremely important this is where athletes absolutely get their edge if you look at it, <laughs> a 5 to 10% advantage in practice day after day compounds. Imagine uh, what that can do to an athlete. These aren't drugs that are necessarily giving someone extra muscles. They're allowing oxygen to go into the blood, allowing for more endurance. We were hearing that the Team 2 Drugs athletes, including Valieva, were doing unheard of run-throughs of their free programs in Krasnoyarsk prior to the Olympics on their peaking schedule. So if you're doing five run-throughs of your program in today's day and age, you know, 1998, Tara Lipinski was doing three long program run-throughs a day, which was considered unheard of, and she was unable to continue her career after the age of 15, and it's unclear if she would have actually been physically able to compete in 2002. Imagine the physical toll that's on their bodies. With today's elements, which are much harder, the spins and steps much more exhausting than were done in 1998. It's unreal to think about why certain athletes are able to have this consistency and do these things. No one is questioning the talent. We could debate the technique for years, but the important thing is what they are physically doing and how come only one country is really seemingly able to do this and not the others. Um, it was really interesting that, of course, Alexei Agudin, the commentator uh, for uh, the Russian Olympics, is saying, you know, what was the reaction when they found out about Valieva? No response, because there was no information. No faith in what's happening is true. Is Camilla clean? I have no idea, no information. Obviously, he has information about all of this, but he is not going to say. He also was joking about the only doping he could talk about is what he had for breakfast this morning. It's interesting, because if you look up a Sasha Cohen interview that she did with AOL uh, several years ago, she talked about how she trained with Alexei Agudin, and he told her all about doping practices that were going on in his day in competition. Now, two-time Olympic champion Katerina Witt spoke about the possible doping of the Russian figure skater Kamila Volyeva. And it's really interesting that Katerina is speaking. She is a beloved athlete around the world. We all love her for her personality, her humor, and we tend to overlook that she is from East Germany, a country that is known for using doping practices for years and years and years. Um, although certainly athletes who have toured with her, um, you know, have their own thoughts about this, about conversations they may or may not have had with her about this over the years. You know, Katerina is so beloved uh, in the sport and she really can put into perspective that these athletes are part of a system and it's not the 15 year old athlete themselves that is really to blame. It is the coaches and the adult. She wrote that the latest Olympic news from the world of figure skating, to be honest, hit me to the core. Camila Volyeva is a young child prodigy, a prodigy who captivates the whole world with her athleticism and grace. She's 15 and being a minor, she has nothing to do with it. This scandal is a dramatic turn at an early stage in her promising career, and I sincerely hope that there are enough people who will support and protect her so that this situation does not break her. I just want to interject here. The one thing is that, yes, this is the early stage of a promising career, She's also not expected to last that long because of these methods that are being used and the short careers of these athletes, um, especially in Team Tudberidza. 
uh, Katerinovic continues, as an athlete, you follow the advice of your peers, in this case, your coach and medical team. You just trust in their knowledge of what is right and wrong. Camila learned quadruple jumps thanks to immense work and courage. Doping does not help here, and certainly not with her artistic charisma. You know, I disagree slightly um, about the quads not uh, having anything to do with doping. Certainly, um, the ability of repetitions to master an element would be aided by taking the drugs. Obviously, her talent in question is her talent in question. The work is the work. Did she have help in that work? Yes. Allegedly, yes. If she were taking drugs in out of competition for training. So that, you know, this is a little bit of a <laughs> murky area. She's certainly not getting, you know, a faster start, you know, at the starting block in track to run a sprint. Um, Vic continued, in any case, those athletes who are guilty of this situation should be removed from the sport forever. She wrote on Instagram. You know, I think it's really important here because there's so much of a focus. They are going to put all of the attention on Camilla. Uh, the Russian press certainly is. We are seeing Camilla out in, in front and center because she's a 15 year old. She's a beacon of innocence. She's a beacon of promise, of talent. And they are really making the focus on her as opposed to her coaches and team. If you notice, and if you read the Russian press, it's interesting. All of the official statements focus on Camilla, that this is bad. They're trying to unravel her. But imagine if this happened in another country, if there were a 15-year-old athlete. We'd be asking, did the athlete's parents give it to her? Did they go to a doctor? Is it the coach that's giving it to her? Is it the federation? None of these questions are being asked in the Russian press. You could tell how serious the Russian Olympic Committee is about doping by the questions that they are or aren't asking here. Remember, they are already on thin ice with the Olympics. And while this one case may not be likely enough to put it over the edge to get Russia banned when it seems the IOC has been unwilling to take action, their actions or inactions tell us a lot about how important doping is or isn't to them and how important clean sport is or isn't to the Russian Olympic Committee, as they certainly don't appear to be embarrassed by any of these actions. They appear to be focused on getting away with it. Now, if one took these drugs, we can logically surmise that she didn't give it to herself. The head of the school, Renat Lyshev, who's the head of Sambo 70, admits that the athletes take drugs. He said only the legal ones. But what about the other adults from the school who are also on the same team here. You know, what about other athletes um, that are taking these drugs? You know, the Russians have put Valieva in practice to make it seem like everything is okay. She's gonna be cleared, and this is their own form of pressure on the court of public opinion. Uh, we have to reiterate, a test from December means that she would have been ineligible to compete at either Russian nationals, to compete at the Europeans, and certainly to compete at the Olympics and perhaps the world championships. You know, there have been other cases, remember, four month ban, eight month ban. What is being discussed here and why we aren't hearing about when the medal ceremony is going to take place is they're discussing what kind of punishment could she get? What about the B sample? What about the punishment? Well, what are the options for punishment? Because they're going to harp on the fact that she's 15 and make it that she is the focus and not the adults giving her the drugs being the focus is that this is part of a systemic state-sponsored doping program and more of a continuation of that. So if they are just acting as though this is a one-off, weird case, we're not going to look at how she got the drugs and we're going to let Russia handle that. And is Russia really going to handle how she got the drugs? Uh, let's think about that. Um, if you think about all of this and how it is going to be handled and perhaps covered up, they could do something where they give her kind of a warning and slap on the wrist and say, oh, she was 15, she is so young, this is a mistake, and look at it that way and make it that this is a young kid making an error, putting the blame on the athlete instead of the adults in the situation and let her compete. Perhaps they would let her compete in an individual event, but strip her of her European championship as kind of a trade-off. Remember, when the 2008 Chinese gymnastics team was suspected of being underage, and there were many reports uh, on the Chinese internet with their own registries listing the athlete's age, the IOC um, and FIG at the time were really in hot water for that. They were saying the internet isn't a legal document, even though the registries on the internet were the legal documents uh, showing the actual ages of the athletes. Suddenly, the 2000 gymnastics team retroactively uh, lost a bronze medal, and all of a sudden, everything went away. It's, it's just very interesting to look at these kinds of things that happen. So you have to wonder who the sacrificial lamb will be. Will a sacrificial lamb be a European championship title? 
uh, that would uh, move everyone up a placement. Uh, and uh, could that be a workaround to allow Camila Valieva to compete in the individual event and allow the sport to continue? You also have to wonder why uh, aren't we seeing other federations push harder? We aren't seeing the US OPC, uh, the Canadian Olympic Committee, or the Japanese Olympic Committee really push publicly. Uh, to apply the pressure like they did in the case of Sally and Peltier, uh, if you watch the meddling documentary on Peacock, where they continually applied pressure every day to get something done at those Olympics that hasn't been done yet here, and it's very curious. And though certain federations may have state-sponsored, you have to wonder what other games are being played, what are the politics behind the scenes, and what are the ramifications of... Uh, future Olympic sport? Uh, does it all want to go away? Uh, is scandal bad for business? Are ratings down across the board? Are they wondering about host countries? Uh, are there other things that they don't want to look at under the hood? There are just lots of questions here about why these other uh, governing bodies haven't been applying more pressure as opposed just to lip service. It does uh, have ramifications. If Valieva is able to compete, and if we are able to say, oh, let's give this 15-year-old girl another chance, um, because she is young, she made a mistake. Does that communicate that doping is okay? Because you have to remember that the, every athlete who is going to be at uh, the forefront of figure skating so far is a teenager. These are teenagers in the marquee sport. And does that communicate to everyone that doping is actually tolerated in figure skating? And what does that say about the legitimacy of a sport that is always <laughs> struggling with its uh, perceived legitimacy? Uh, this will certainly uh, likely wind up in the court of arbitration for sport. Um, but it's important to remember where there is abuse, there is abuse. We know of verbal, emotional, and physical abuse in this camp. Uh, I certainly would refer to the Japanese documentary about two breeds from 2018. Uh, you can't actually watch it on YouTube. Uh, there are copies of it. Uh, we've certainly watched it on Patreon. Uh, her interview and treatment of her top athletes is very revealing uh, in that documentary, uh, which is also why you have seen Team Two Breeds only uh, participate in documentaries where they can control and edit, uh, such as you know her recent interview with Russian First Channel, which was also alarming, where she blamed Evgenia Medvedeva's uh, broken foot at the 2018 season on being too fat. Um, and if you look at uh, pictures or videos of Evgenia Medvedeva from the competitions before she broke her foot, perhaps you would have a different opinion uh, than Coach Ateri Tudbaridze. Um, I would certainly continue to look at how is Russia and the ROC handling it. I would look at all of the quotes that we are seeing from Tarasova, from Averbuk, uh, from Zhulin, from Besmianova, from everyone who is speaking to the Russian press. I would look at all of the articles. Are they looking inward or is this gaslighting and deflection? Uh, have they indicated that they are going to get to the bottom of who actually gave a 15-year-old girl medication uh, that is given uh, for heart problems and why? Why would Camila Valieva have this? Um, this is a dangerous drug. This situation is also ruining a young girl's life and athletic career. Um, and are they just using her as a pawn and deflecting? I wouldn't be surprised if she returns to Russia a hero um, and it's a situation like Adelina Sotnikova 2.0 where within Russia, she is viewed as a hero, and around the world, she is viewed as a joke and an example of cheating and doping. We also have to look at Dr. Shevetsky. Uh, he was certainly involved in a scandal in 2007. He also gave Yekaterina Bobrova meldenium in 2016, which led to her uh, being suspended. You know, why is he still so present at these events with all of uh, these scandals? Do you know the name or face of any other team doctor in figure skating? Uh, and a doctor who is an anesthesiologist, he was in the Russian team box for the team event at the moment when Mishnah and Gayamov had their bad fall, and remember, he wasn't checking for concussions, so what actually is his role? You also have to wonder, why doesn't Russia even bother with therapeutic use exemptions? This is what we have seen. Uh, the Russians love to point out Simone Biles, and they will use her body type uh, to talk about the fact um, that she has to be on drugs. They will point that she takes Adderall. And this is actually a really legitimate argument and a legitimate discussion that could be had. It's just not done in a proper way. Um, they love to talk about the fact that she is on Adderall. Now, psychiatric drugs, uh, psychopharmacologic drugs are seen differently in different parts of the world. There are benefits in a sport like figure skating or gymnastics to taking Adderall. You know, we live in a world where we're not supposed to talk about bodies, we're not supposed to talk about women's bodies, 
but this is a sport with a strength to weight ratio and girls do lose their jumps when they go through puberty. So a discussion of allowing someone like Simone Biles to take Adderall can actually have an impact on it, uh, on their performance, because it would allow them to have more of an appetite suppressant uh, in addition to the, uh, the additional focusing uh, that can take place. Obviously, if you can focus in practice and focus in competition, it's going to be a benefit. Obviously, if you have attention deficit disorder, you know, not being able to focus is dangerous. And would Simone have ever reached the heights and been able to do all of the amazing skills if she didn't have the ability to focus properly? We all remember the athlete Alyssa Beckerman, who was often chided for her inability to focus uh, on television by her coach, Mary Lee Tracy. Imagine what she could have done if she were on Adderall at all times. Uh, other athletes have talked about being ADD, such as Sasha Cohen and Jeremy Abbott. Um, they were certainly athletes who struggled with consistency in competition. Uh, you have to wonder if on certain medications, what they would have been able to do. Uh, the rules about Ritalin, Adderall, Vyvanse have certainly uh, evolved over the last decades. Um, but why doesn't Russia bother with the therapeutic use exemptions, which could actually allow an athlete, if this drug tested positive in her system, uh, to be there? Theoretically, she would have to have a medical reason for why she would take a drug uh, for angina or such a heart problem. And you have to wonder how many 15-year-olds uh, who are taking this drug could actually be a top athlete. And perhaps there would be more things called into question if you actually have to reg register the therapeutic use exemptions. Um, we did see that the William, both Venus and Serena Williams were on a large number of therapeutic use exemptions, um, which is a legitimate argument being made. Um, it had racial overtones when it was brought up um, during the hacking because they only focused on three athletes, all of whom were African-American. Uh, when that took place uh, several years ago, um, there could have been an actual discussion about how many therapeutic use exemptions are allowed um, and the things around that. There have been other athletes that have had therapeutic use exemptions um, over the years. Um, and some are seen as being legitimate and some aren't. Uh, people will likely debate uh, Simone Biles and the Williams sisters taking their therapeutic use exemptions until the end of time. Uh, it is what it is, but it's certainly interesting that a country wouldn't even try to get therapeutic use exemptions for their athletes. Yeah, they're giving them those drugs. Uh, and maybe uh, certain drugs are just simply inexcusable. You cannot find a reason that will jive uh, with that information ever being made public. Um, you also have to wonder about the timing of this season. This happened in December. You have to remember that the Grand Prix final was canceled. So theoretically, it is alleged that these athletes cycle off of drugs five to seven days prior to a figure skating competition. So without the Grand Prix final taking place, they would have been able to stay on the drugs for a longer period of time to allow for higher training and use that time before the Grand Prix final to really enhance performance for the Russian nationals, the Europeans, and certainly uh, the Olympics. Um, typically, athletes who are doping uh, will use diuretics to wash out the drugs that they are taking. But if the athlete were underweight, or if the dose of the diuretics were off, the test would come up positive. Uh, these athletes have also discussed the restriction of food and water at times. We all remember Alina Zagitova discussing not being allowed to drink water at certain big competitions in her life. Uh, this can also affect all of those levels with doping. Uh, these things are really discussed at length in Grigory Rodchenkov's book. Uh, there's a link to it in the description box. Uh, so I certainly would recommend reading that and drawing your own conclusions about this situation and other situations. You know, people are going to harp on the fact that this test wasn't at the Olympics. But you have to remember, you can't test positive for something in out-of-competition testing and be eligible to compete here. And in a sport like figure skating, is the benefit really to have a drug as a stimulant in competition or is the training the key here is the added boost of training every day allowing for more endurance and or recovery something that is simply uh, the real weapon it, the ability to train more train longer train harder train more repetitions and you have to think about it it also is interesting to look at how fast the bodies of certain athletes are breaking down. I would look at the number of repetitions that these athletes are doing, look at their size, look at their development, look at when they don't go through puberty while they're competing and what happens to them and the physical changes as soon as they stop uh, and really look at what is going on.
Um, remember, Nancy Kerrigan recently gave an interview uh, where she said that Coach Evie Scottfold told her, don't worry about a triple axle or quad because if you want to have a long career, it'll ruin your knees and ankles. We'll just look at these athletes. Certainly, so many of them have back injuries, which wasn't discussed as much uh, during the 1980s when Nancy was discussing trying triple axles and quads and have to wonder about whether every Scottfold was onto something about how fast bodies can break down, especially female bodies, going through major physical changes and trying these very difficult elements. You know, there's been such a focus on the ultra C elements. Russia has so many ultra C elements. They have had such a prevalence of them as opposed to the rest of the world. And while I don't think anyone debates that they have great technique and training methods uh, in terms of learning elements, you have to wonder what other kind of elements are adding a boost there. And if there are other factors at play here besides just age and natural competition. Also notice how low profile coach Terry Tudbaridze continues to be at these Olympics as Camila Valjeva is pushed front and center. It's very reminiscent of the Andrea Radikon situation, although this drug is certainly far more alarming than taking a Sudafed. Just remember that in this situation, this is a 15-year-old minor, but it's the adults who gave it to her. And if nothing is done to ban a figure skater who has taken drugs from competition, what does it say about the legitimacy of figure skating as a whole? And does the sport and the Olympics have any credibility? And what is the future of uh, either? You know, is NBC going to keep forking over billions of dollars uh, to put on a TV show that people don't think is actually real and that people are turned off from? What uh, does NBC think about uh, how Camila Valjeva's doping case uh, should be handled. I think it's also really distressing uh, that Johnny Weir and Tara Lipinski are commentators who are really handled by NBC's entertainment division. Uh, when these scandals were discussed in 2002, uh, Sandra Bezik and Scott Hamilton talked about this with some reflection, uh, with some intelligence. But in this situation, think about how much money Johnny Weir has made uh, covering Russia, uh, being in Russian shows, and really thought to have kissed the ass of Russia for decades uh, to get uh, an added benefit. Think of his Russian fan clubs over the years. He was taking selfies with the Terry Tudbaridze uh, and with the figure skaters and posting it. And now he and Tara are kind of dumbfounded at covering this event, and they weren't really offering much commentary. So this is also... Um, you know, there are impacts to uh, the bed uh, that NBC has made in covering uh, the Olympics and covering these serious issues that are going on with Russia and with their commentary team, because are Johnny and Tara really uh, who you want to have discuss serious issues like this? Or what What can they actually say? Wh what is their expertise of their commentary uh, about doping scandals? And, and how, um, how much are they willing to look under the hood uh, of uh, these situations. Uh, just lots of things to think about uh, over the next few days. Um, I would definitely think about the fact that figure skating has really become a race about postponing puberty. Does a Terry Tuberiza have a body type? Is Camila Valieva actually an outlier uh, there? Um, how long is her career expected to last um, compared to other athletes? A Terry does seem to have a type, shorter athletes, lithe athletes. Look at the juniors, look at other members of the team here. And why are so many Russian figure skaters on hormone therapy after they quit the sport? Thank you. Good night.